I understand from, from reading it some of the reasons why you might have felt you know, this needs to be written, but I want to hear it from yourself. What was the moment that you said to yourself, right, I just need to write this book? <laughs> <laughs> well, so the whole purpose of the book um, is to look at uh, the social, moral, and economic benefits of diversity and why diversity is good for society. Um, and when I look at diversity, I look at it across the board, um, not just race, not just gender, um, but also looking at uh, LGBTQ, looking at age, class, and disability, because I think uh, with a lot of these things, clearly there's a hierarchy um, of inclusion in society, and there's a hierarchy of discrimination. Um, and in terms of discrimination, I would say uh, people of colour are probably at the bottom of that. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of inclusion, we know elite white men are at the top of that. Mm -hmm. And I think often when you are from a discriminated group, you only look at this issue from your own perspective. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do was to take a bird's eye view, because until everybody has a chance to be the best they can be, mm -hmm then none of us really survive or succeed. So you can't just think, oh, I only want to look at black people, I only want to look at women, or I would know, actually, the majority of people in society are discriminated against. Mm. And as a result, we're all losing out because it means this country isn't being the best it can be, and the same for America. So this book is from a UK um, and US perspective. But what made me want to write it was, uh, like most uh, British television talent, um, I uh, wanted to try and crack America, uh, and so I moved to America. I didn't crack America, I sort of made a little dent in her east and west coast, and I stayed away from Kansas, and anyone who knows Kansas kind of knows why. Um, anyway, so I uh, was... <laughs> I don't think you know Kansas. And so, so anyway, so I was filming one day in Las Vegas, and there was this young man who appeared on set who was covered head to toe in tattoos, uh, and gang markings, and I instantly felt uncomfortable around him and intimidated and a little bit nervous. And, um, and at that moment, I was able to see this issue from both sides, because mm. being a black woman, I've always looked at it as being on the receiving end, mm. as opposed to doing it myself. Mm. And I thought, wow, so when I spoke to him, yes, he had a difficult time in a start in life, he'd made some not so great choices, but our sound man had taken him on as an apprentice, and I thought, wow, if, if even I'm feeling funny around him, mm -hmm. what chance has he got? Mm -hmm. And how many times is he gonna come up against this sort of unspoken sort of awkwardness that we all know what it is, no one ever talks about it, but we all know what it is when you experience mm -hmm. it. And how many times is he gonna come up against that before he just gives up? Mm -hmm. And so that's what made me want to start the conversation. And, and that's now, because you are a oh. champion and, and you're a pioneer for the other groups that you represent, being being black, coming from a working class background, mm. being a woman. Mm. And what was really interesting to read was about um, you experiencing the imposter syndrome. And when I read this, I thought, oh, you! Yeah. If you don't know what the imposter syndrome is, yeah. it's basically yeah. when you feel a bit like a fraud sometimes. Every day. And you mentioned Agnes, and I, and I love this. So please oh, yeah. tell me all this, what Agnes is. <laughs> How do you overcome her? Okay. So, yes, I totally uh, uh, experience the imposter syndrome every day of my life. I think, oh, wouldn't life be boring if you always felt like, oh my gosh, I've made it, or oh my gosh, I'm so... I think I only want to feel like that when I'm, you know, in my 80s or something. I think you kind of need that insecurity. That's what drives you. At least that's what drives yeah. me, yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, yeah, so... Agnes is, so you know how Beyonce has Sasha Fierce, her sort of confident side? Well, my insecure side I named Agnes. There aren't any Agneses in the room. <laughs> Good, I don't mean to offend any Agneses. But anyway, so, <laughs> so Agnes is basically my insecure alter ego. And in naming her, as it were, it made me uh, much more aware of when she's in control. 
So there'll be times where I should do something that will be beneficial to me, but I feel whether it be unworthy of it or scared or whatever, and I don't do it because I let Agnes win. At least now I'm able to name Agnes, I'm either able to make the choice to let Agnes win or to intervene and let my better side take over. And I think in, in, in actually sort of highlighting it and naming it, it makes you able to control it rather than it control you. So that's why. But yeah, no, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.